Hey everybody, what's going on? No live tonight, so I figured I would just do a quick video. I'm gonna go through the market and economic news and tell you guys why I think in the next two weeks we could actually start seeing the market crash. I think today was just a little uptick. They were desperate to have a reason to jump the market back up after a horrible, horrible week. And it's still closed deep in the red for the week. However, the jobs report gave them just a little cover to get back up, but we're gonna talk about why the jobs report's actually bad news for the market and why the market today was completely fake. And I'm gonna show you how in just a second. So let's get started. All right, so the Dow was up 300 points today. S&P was up, they're all about 1% uh, up just in that range, which, which seems like a big day, right? Well, it's not that big because they were already coming back from the Dow was down over a thousand points as of last night. So uh, this barely did, didn't even scrape by a, a whole third of the week's losses, but you know, they tried. But on top of this, here's, here's what's really interesting. How's the market going up? And yet gold is now at an all time high and soaring, by the way, soaring. Now this is really showing you what's happening. Everybody's running to safe havens. Uh, Brent, well, Stayed at 91, which is still elevated oil up in general. And then um, crypto is a little down, but we expect that with the halving. But the main thing I'm looking at right now is gold, because this is to me the indicator that the market and the economy are uh, tipping downwards and everybody's running to safe havens. This is just an unreal how much gold is gaining. So tells me next week's probably going to be down now. Uh, right now, the market is completely dependent upon the belief that there's still going to be rate cuts this year. Well, I'm going to show you right in a second here why I don't think <laughs> they're coming. There might be one later in the year. I still think that they might do a small cut in September unless things completely break before then. Um, but just <laughs> get ready because um, I'm going to show you why I don't think we're seeing cuts in June May, anytime soon and at the earliest September. And even then, I think we only see one for the year. But watch. OK, so today uh, Logan came out and he's one of the Fed presidents. He says there's no urgency right now for the Fed to cut. We have time. So right there, he's telling you that they're they're not in a hurry to cut. They're not feeling the urgency that everybody else is. Okay, Canada just announced it's getting ready to cut. There's other countries cutting, but not the US. Why? Because these guys are actually, Powell's, uh, Powell's Fed is different than other people's Fed. And watch this. So he believes it's too soon to think about cutting interest rates, giving the upside risk to inflation. Why is there an upside risk to inflation? Well, we just got manufacturing numbers are up, PMI was up, and also uh, the inflation numbers have been up the last couple months there's no downtrend right now. And what's funny is a couple weeks ago, Powell was out there saying after the FOMC meeting, <coughs> Powell was out there saying that, you know, it looks good. Everything looks good. We're, uh, we're, we're, this is normal. We see a little bump during inflation, but he left in there. And I told you guys this on one of my other videos, he left in there that we're going to be monitoring the data closely before cutting. So he tried to have his cake and eat it too. Let the market think cuts are coming, but also give himself an out. Well, that out is coming really soon in all this language. Um, Fed's Logan says inflation data more important than jobs and GDP right now. So he just poo pooed on the jobs report and the GDP, which is coming in higher. Why? Well, we're going to see in a minute that the jobs report is completely fake. What the headline news is and GDP, you can explain that away with inflation. He's getting increasingly concerned about the upside risk to inflation. So uh, they're, they're concerned that inflation is about to break out. And that alone will keep rate cuts away. Okay, so gold jumping to another high. Already looked at that, but you can see the chart. It's just, it's getting unreal how much and how quickly it's rising. All right, so Kobisi writes this today, and I thought this was just great. Current situation, stocks are rising like the Fed's about to cut rates, like I just said. <laughs> they think the Fed's going to cut, and they're maintaining that. Bonds are falling like rate hikes are coming back. Interesting, interesting. Would they actually dare to raise rates again? Um, yeah, if inflation keeps going up. Gold price is rising like we're entering recession. Exactly, because we're in a recession. I just want you guys to understand that when inflation is outpacing GDP, 
you, you can make a good argument that that's already a recession, which I think we're in. Oil prices rising like the economy is perfectly fine. <laughs> Crypto's at all time highs like nothing's happening. What's happening? Exactly. Nothing makes sense. And you know why nothing makes sense? Because we have no real guidance because everybody's scrambling to make things the way they want it to be, not as they are. If things were as they are, we'd be going through a correction right now, a much needed correction because we need to rebuild because we're in the bubble of bubbles right now, but they're not quite ready for that, which means the crash is gonna be epic. And again, I think it could start pretty soon. All right, here's what the jobs report official numbers were. Adds 303,000 jobs in March, almost 100,000 above expectations. Unemployment fell by 0.1%. US economy added jobs for 39 consecutive months. How can the Fed cut interest rates now? Now, <laughs> that is uh, not, I mean, it's true, but it's it's not what it looks like on headline. Now, this is what Joe Biden's out there touting, what all like, you know, um, Jim Cramer's gonna tout, all the all the libs, all the, the guys that want this economy to be good, they're all gonna be touting this, but it's just not true. And by the way, uh, strong jobs report along with rising CPI, PPI, and PCE. Yeah, interest rate cuts are coming less and less likely. It's clearly higher for longer is back. That is absolutely correct. As I've been saying since last December, check this out though. This tells you a little bit about what kind of jobs we're getting. Office vacancy rates in Q1 officially hit their highest level on record. Why would office rates, everybody's been coming back to the office, right? That's what I thought, but oh, wait. Office rates, vacancies are hitting all time highs. You know what that means? It means white collar jobs are drying up. Full time jobs drying up. They're, they're disappearing. Good jobs, let's just put it that way, are drying up. That's It's all low wage jobs right now. Low wage and part time jobs. Office vacancies increased to 19.8%, a 0.2% increase over Q4. Many corporations are still scaling back on office space due to increase in remote work, which I disagree with that. Many corporations have been calling people back, but whatever. Vacancy rates already breached 86 and 91 peaks. Office building prices have fallen over 40%. There's your commercial real estate crisis going on right now. Anyways, let's continue. Something broke in the markets on Thursday. Now, Thursday, yesterday, it's when the Dow was up 300 and crashed down 500. That's an 800 point swing in one day. Absolutely wild, was wild to watch as it happened. And I agree with Zero Hedge here. Something is off, something's off. And today, uh, you know, I, I think it was just a, a little recovery, buying back in at these low prices after the week. I do not believe today's green would be a trend unless it's a short lived trend for just a week or two. Let me uh, cover that in a moment. This was posted yesterday. By the way, I watched this video she posted. It's very good. But uh, six big bankruptcies happened on the second. Bank bankruptcies. Okay, banks going bankrupt. And that was the second of the month, Tuesday. Tells me a growing concern in the coming months. By the way, Daniel DiMartino Booth is brilliant. You should watch her. She, uh, she used to work for the Fed. She has great data analysis. All right, so finance law writes, Alan Greenspan gave away the game plan years ago. U.S. isn't going to default on its debt. They're going to force everyone else to default on theirs by rates and dollar shortages. And everyone's forced to sell U.S. treasuries. They'll buy them below face value. Just wait. Just wait. This is happening. The dollar is actually gaining in strength. You know why? Because the rest of the world is doing worse than we are. The rest of the world is doing worse. We, as bad as things are here, we're doing better. And one of the reasons is, is because the Fed is holding strong by quantitative tightening and by keeping the rates up. Now, we'll see if that maintains, but, because even if it maintains, by the way, the market could still crash and our economy still needs to go through its own recession to uh, get out of this inflationary period, everything. But uh, the, it doesn't mean the dollar will go away. So we're gonna watch that and see if that happens. But yes, that would be an out for the US in uh, getting away from <laughs> this debt pressure it's facing. We'll see how it works out. All right, here's the truth about the jobs report. Now, Gavin Newsom, idiot that he is, um, or just scam artist, you you choose. 
Can't wait to see how Fox News spins this one. And Zero Heads has a perfect response by pointing out literally every new job in March was part time while full time jobs dropped again or at a 14 month low. This is what the jobs report really was, guys. Part time jobs rose by 691,000 while full time jobs dropped 6,000 since uh, 2023, January 1st, 2023, which is now a month and a quarter. I mean, sorry, a year and a quarter. There has not been a single full time job created. Um, on the average okay so we're not plus one so you know you people are like well i got a full-time job great you did uh two more were lost while you got one that's what i mean by that uh full-time jobs have been collapsing all the working gained right now is part-time jobs that is not the sign of a strong economy. That's a sign of a very weak economy and uh, a desperate economy. People just looking for any kind of work they can get. Nothing to be excited about. But you know what? The the people in power are are going to be. Ex <laughs> they are rejoicing right now. They're getting what they want. They're getting that headline news. But all of us. Too bad, too bad X exists now. <laughs> too bad uh, people like uh, me exist to go through this and say, uh, yeah, you guys are lying. And that's that's what's really going on. Um, here we go. First time I'm seeing any report admit it might be like 08 or worse. Mainstream media is still telling us the economy great. It's not. Now here is Fitch coming out, the ratings agency. Fitch predicts the coming commercial real estate crisis will wipe out more property value than 2008 believes any rebound will be slower and the gains will be lower. Absolutely they will because we're entering a new economy, an economy with uh, AI, an economy where people realize remote work's a possibility and so on and so forth. This is, uh, is gonna get wild, guys. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We ain't seen nothing yet in the real estate markets. It is coming and probably by the end of this year into next year, it's going to be full on out crisis. Just wait till those Airbnbs start hitting the market. I'm telling you, it's going to get nuts. All right. Again, Biden coming out bragging about the fake numbers while the economy implodes. Yeah. And here he is. This just lies, lies, lies. But you know what? He he looks good as a liar. So I'm going to give him a second so we can all laugh at how uh how he's completely taking all this out of context because they just they know that's their headline they know you won't look underneath the hood at least most people all right market's about to get really jumpy dealer gamma is cratered on a rally dealers will get longer volume dampening on a sell-off dealers will get shorter volume accelerating and you just see the volatility here i mean the the spikes up and down lately and we are cratering right now so uh, it, it's it's about it's about to fall off guys and i think that unless this shakes out unless something unexpected happens in the next couple weeks i really think we could be off to the races by the end of april it could be a market in complete free fall all right saw this great graphic last bounce before meltdown <laughs> the wolf inviting the sheep in that's this is what they want the retail investors to come in thinking it's a good time to buy before they rug pull and uh, they make out with their money. But funny, funny. I've said it before, it's 2008 all over again. You don't need a subprime mortgage crisis to have a housing crisis. You just need a catalyst and a bubble. We have a bigger bubble than we did then. 100%, 100% true. All right, Gaed, who's been uh, talking about this since last year. He hasn't been wrong in my opinion. He's just been early. It says they will panic. They'll have no choice. They must save the yen. And with oil spiking, do so decisively. The yen being uh, Japan hasn't changed their markets in 30 years and just started raising rates for the first time in 30 years, which is offsetting everything. This was always a spark for the credit event, reverse carry trade. They will not be believe it until it's too late. I will not relent. And that's because uh, in exchange or in response to Zero Edge saying, BOJ's Bank of Japan's UADA say it's weaker yen could prompt rate hikes. So get ready because Japan could be shaking up the entire Western economy, which would be the global economy. Finally, today, an earthquake hit New York, which was the biggest in its history I saw, 5.5, um, and then an aftershock of 4.0. Well, yesterday, lightning struck the Statue of Liberty. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. So lightning struck the Statue of Liberty yesterday. Today, two earthquakes in New York. 
And on Monday, we have this massive eclipse coming as well as the Devil's Comet in the sky be reappearing on Monday. I'm telling you guys, there is something going on here. And, you know, I'm a guy of faith. And if you don't believe in God with all this happening, I just don't know how you explain all this. Something's going on. There's there's something shaking in our nation in 2024. It's about to get lit more than you can believe. So after all going all through that, we know now the jobs report is crap. The market really had nothing to rally on today and yet it rallied anyway. So that market rally was, was all nonsense. Rate cuts are not happening anytime soon unless it goes in complete free fall and we're deflationary by May. That's the only way rate cuts are coming. I don't think that's gonna happen, but we, we it could, it could. If the market tanks enough, it's possible. Um, if the housing market breaks in the next few weeks completely, it's possible. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be more towards the end of the year. I do think the market could crash here soon. I, I really do. And who knows, it could be epic when it crashes. Uh, beyond that though, the economy itself will start downturning quicker uh, going into the end of the year. I think we're gonna have a really rough economy and stock market come uh, election time. And I also think that the all these numbers that have been fakely holding everything up are starting to be exposed. We're in a new quarter and it seems to me like things are accelerating fast. All right. Well, guys, that's all I got for today. I hope uh, you guys got to see a lot going on here. Um, it is getting wild, but you know what? It's going to get wild before it gets better. Let's just pray Trump comes back. We need him to rebuild this because it's going to be a smoldering heap of an economy by the end of the year. Just letting you know. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you soon.